Hello and welcome to the News in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Charity Educational Endowment, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the Board of Trustees meeting at Rifa Palace. His Highness Sheikh Isa highlighted the importance of creating quality educational opportunities for Bahrainis to support citizens in realising their potential and playing a key role in the Kingdom's development. His Highness noted that Bahraini citizens are the Kingdom's most valuable resource and stressed the importance of continuing to invest in their education in support of the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness highlighted His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's continued support to the Kingdom's educational sector, which has experienced significant development in recent years. His Highness Sheikh Issa expressed appreciation for the Royal Order issued by His Majesty the King, restructuring the Board of Trustees, and congratulated the new members of the Board on their appointment, wishing them every success in their duties. His Highness highlighted that the endowment was established to provide Bahrainis the opportunity to continue their academic journeys and fulfil their ambitions through higher education. During proceedings, three central committees were established. One, an Order and Governance Committee responsible for governance, administrative and financial audits. Two, an Educational and Quality Committee responsible for reviewing the educational strategy of the endowment, developing the procedures for awarding scholarships and monitoring career progress following graduation. Three, an Investment and Asset Management Committee responsible for sustainable revenue and strengthening partnerships and collaborations. The Board further directed for a strategic review to identify future opportunities, establish forward-looking key performance indicators and strengthen the brand identity of the endowment. The Representatives Council Speaker Fazir bint Abdullah Zainal received Indonesian Regional Representative Council Deputy Speaker Nunu Sambunu. Zainal affirmed that the relations between Bahrain and Indonesia are based on firm foundations and a common desire to achieve steady progress for close cooperation, noting their development. She highlighted that the government continues its march of development efforts to implement qualitative economic projects, stressing that Bahrain is a global financial centre and a strategic gateway to enter the Gulf market and the Middle East. The speaker stressed that Indonesia was an important station towards the vast Asian market, noting the favourable opportunities for the development of bilateral relations and the promotion of trade and investment exchange. The two sides discussed parliamentary support for strengthening cooperation and pushing them towards further development in various development fields. In the presence of the President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the SCIA, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, the Russian Mufti Shura Council and Religious Administration of Muslims awarded the Ambassador in Bahrain in Moscow, Ahmed Al Saathi, the Medal of Honour which is the highest decoration awarded by the Religious Administration during a ceremony held in the Moscow Grand Mosque. The ambassador affirmed that he will dedicate the medal to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and affirms that the level of bilateral relations reached is thanks to His Majesty. He thanked the SEIA President for his support to strengthen relations between the two friendly countries. For his part, the Russian Mufti Shura Council Chairman said that the medal comes in appreciation of the ambassador's efforts and contributions to strengthening Russian-Bahraini relations. His Majesty the King's advisor for diplomatic affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with the Kuwaiti Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Nasser Al Mohammed Al Suba. The Kuwaiti Minister of Finance and Minister of State for Economic Affairs and Investments, Abdul Wahab Mohammed Al Rashid, the GCC Secretary General Dr. Naif Al Hajraf, and the Director General of the Kuwait Direct Investment Promotion Authority, Sheikh Dr. Michel Jaba Al Ahmed Al Suba, on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2022 in Davos. During the meeting, the two sides reviewed the course of the brotherly and historical relations between Bahrain and Kuwait in various fields and the development of joint work at all levels. The most important issues and developments, especially in the economic and financial fields, at the regional and international levels, and means to support efforts were reviewed. His Majesty the King's advice for diplomatic affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Prime Minister of Palestine, Dr. Mohammed Ashraf Thaqiyeh, 
in the presence of the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid Al Ziani, on the sidelines of the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum 2022 in Davos. In the meeting affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause to achieve peace in the region. The two sides discussed the bilateral relations and efforts to enhance economic and commercial relations as well as a joint coordination in many fields. Dirasat organised a symposium online on green recovery within the framework of the Kingdom of Bahrain's presidency of the current session of the Asian Cooperation Dialogue. On the occasion, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs for Political Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of Dirasat, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, stressed that the symposium aims to benefit from consultations between representatives, researchers, and experts and view their opinions. He pointed out that the Kingdom of Bahrain has accumulated a balance of development experiences and has proven its success in making achievements and overcoming challenges. The Secretary General of the Asian Cooperative Dialogue said that the Kingdom of Bahrain has taken the initiative to engage the public and private sectors, as well as the civil society, in an admirable way in dealing with the concept of green recovery, which is an essential aspect in the strategy of the Asian Cooperation Dialogue. The National Initiative for Agricultural Development, NIAD, launched an agricultural platform to unite efforts towards the development and strengthening of the agricultural sector in Bahrain. During the launch ceremony, NIAD Secretary General Sheikh Maram bint Isa Al Khalifa said Agro.bh platform is an implementation of the Royal Directives to establish an effective agricultural sector and to find solutions that contribute to achieving food security in line with the Comprehensive Development Programme and the 2030 Economic Vision. She added that it also reflects the vision of the government on securing an environment that supports sustainable development and stimulates knowledge-based economic growth. She noted that the platform initiative reinforces the orientation established by Her Royal Highness the wife of His Majesty the King through her presidency of the NIAD Advisory Council and a follow-up of its activities. She said that the platform directly serves the agricultural sector and is linked to many other national projects by providing updated and accurate data that helps in sector-specific development process. Sheikh Maram expressed appreciation to more than 21 governmental and private entities for their efforts and for the providing NIAD with all data, information, statistics, reports and scientific research related to agriculture in Bahrain. The Arab Forum on Boosting Economic Integration Among Arab Countries has concluded which was organised by the Arab Parliament in cooperation with the Arab Administrative Development Organisation under the patronage of the Prime Minister of Egypt and in the presence of the Arab Parliament Speaker Abdel al Assoumi and a number of ministers and prominent figures. The forum closing statement stressed the importance of Arab parliaments creating the appropriate legislative environment to encourage and facilitate trade exchange supporting the role of the private sector and achieve Arab economic integration. It called for the need to remove restrictions and open Arab markets to Arab goods and services with the need to design policies and develop effective mechanisms to achieve Arab economic integration. It also stressed the importance of preparing an integrated and joint Arab strategy for trade and services and e-commerce for the development of the econo economies of Arab countries and for giving utmost importance to Arab food security. The Telecommunications Regulatory Authority in Bahrain held an open forum on its draft work plan for the year 2022 to 2023 to present their ideas and opinions on the draft in the presence of representatives from the telecommunications sector and Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications and Consumer Rights Protection Organisations. Through this plan, the authority seeks to implement the government's policy stipulated in the fifth national telecommunications plan ensure a flexible and secure work network for all users, provide and develop comprehensive high-speed broadband services for all, and review regulations and laws related to the protection and empowerment of consumers. TRA Director General Philip Marnick expressed pleasure in the great turnout witnessed by the first open forum organised by TRA, which provided the concerned parties with a valuable opportunity to present their ideas and opinions.
Today, we've opened our doors to all of our stakeholders and consumers as we've tried to outline what we're trying to do in our work plan. The work plan will set the work we're going to do over the next 18 months or so. It enables us to talk to industry, to talk to our stakeholders, to talk to consumers, to get their views on what we're trying to do in our work. In our work today, what we're trying to focus on is how we make Bahrain the best place to do the internet, how people can access the internet, whether they're actually at home or whether they're on the move. And we've all discovered over the pandemic how important it is to have good internet access. So our aim is really, we're trying to get government policy to make Bahrain the best place in the world and best connected, one of the best connected places there is. For consumers, we're trying to make sure our organisation is very consumer focused. We think of consumers, we try and understand what they need, what they're doing to keep them safe online. We also want to make sure our networks are safe and secure so that actually things don't fall over. So when you use it, actually it works well. We're trying to make broadband actually really, really good. You get what you want, you get the service, you're able to access, you're able to do what you need to do. Whether it's watching television over your broadband line, whether it's playing games, whether it's doing your schoolwork at home, we're actually working. What we want to do is make sure that it's all available for you. So today we're trying to engage with everyone, take them with their comments and views, and we'll issue our final work plan probably towards the end of June, beginning of July. On the occasion of the International Day of Thyroid Disease, the doctors and diabetes and endocrinologists at the BDF Hospital organised a number of specialised lectures at the Crown Prince Centre for Medical Training and Research to raise awareness of thyroid disease and ways to treat them. The Medical Forum reviews all the effects that the disease may cause in the human body, especially women. This awareness event highlighted ways to educate the community members about the precise details of this disease and other diseases that it may cause in case a patient develops this disease. We started this programme in 1985 and uh, usually the screening is done by collecting a blood sample from the cord of blood and all these cases are uh, diagnosed early and referred to the uh, specialist who will start them on the treatment and will continue following them. Uh, it's very important to mention that congenital hypothyroid should be diagnosed early within the first two weeks of life and the treatment has to be started early as well uh, in order to prevent mental retardation. This is why my advice to all the mothers to make sure that the thyroid function test for their newborns is normal within the first week of life and not to miss that. Uh, the world celebrates on 25th of May the thyroid day because uh, it highlights the importance of uh, the, the, that gland which is very important in the body and it regulates the most of the systems in the body. Uh, we have conducted the research in BDF hospital. It was done by me with Dr. Afriyal Stabur, consultant endocrinologist, and Dr. Fatma Khalid Al Hamadi. And uh, the result of this study showed that 20% of Bahrainis they have hypothyroidism, which is a very ex extremely high uh, percentage. And 73% um, of these patients are female between the age of 20 to 40, which is their reproductive age. So that's why I wanted to highlight the importance of uh, thyroid disease treatment, try to prevent any uh, complication for the mother and the uh, baby.